Prop master Doug Harlocker's career is incredibly expansive. You can see it for yourself. His IMDB is packed with credits, the likes of Independence Day, War of the Worlds, Oblivion, and Blade Runner, just to name a few out of the dozens of features. Harlocker and his art department crew were director Denis Villeneuve's collaborators yet again for Dune's second installment, Dune Part 2, teaming up with cinema's go-to watchmaker Hamilton to design a wrist tool prop for the film. Thanks to our friends over at Hamilton, we had the opportunity of getting hands-on with these two limited edition Dune Part 2 collaborations, the Ventura Edge Dune Limited Edition and the Ventura XXL Bright Dune Limited Edition. Both based on a wholly original model, folks will only get to see in the movie, and one unfortunately not available for purchase. These two pieces are a ton of fun, especially for fans of the franchise with some excellent attention to detail, shipped with a custom case that looks like it was plucked from Arrakis itself complete with sandlight texture and text lining the interior. For anyone who's curious, it's the Litany Against Fear written out in the Fremen language, and we think it's such a cool inclusion on Hamilton's part. Anyway, let's dive right in and take a closer look at Hamilton's two latest cinematic creations. Although it's not thoroughly discussed in Frank Herbert's original novel, Time, specifically on Arrakis where Villeneuve's adaptations focus, is said to be the same as that on Earth. One day is 24 hours, 1,440 minutes, or 86,400 seconds. Long story short, Herbert didn't concern himself too much with making it any different, and the Dune narrative in Villeneuve's approach keeps time the same way we do. So Villeneuve, Harlock's art department, and the team over at Hamilton really had endless possibilities with the look and feel of the film's dedicated prop, and the two production watches inspired by the prop which we have here. On our right, we have the Ventura Edge Dune Limited Edition, and on the left, the Ventura XXL Bright Dune Limited Edition. And both use a similar dial design that rolls over the ethos of the film's Desert Watch at their core with their blue LED details. As the story goes, Hamilton took the Ventura's general shape, a late 50s space age icon in its own right, and made it otherworldly with futuristic brutalist case modifications and two unique dials with Fremen inspired bright blue details. The actual movie watch is a lot less Ventura than these two limited edition consumer versions, but it uses similar rounded chamfers and brush finishes that remind us a lot of other industrial set pieces of other sci-fi franchises, and we'll let you guess which ones we're thinking of. The Fremen of the desert planet Arrakis use moisture-preserving still suits in order to survive conditions where daytime temperatures can reach upwards of 70 degrees Celsius. That's about 158 degrees Fahrenheit for our North American folks. These full body suits have far more earth toned primitivity than the garb of Dune's other houses and factions, like House Harkonnen and House Atreides in Villeneuve's adaptations. Yes, the blue details definitely feel true to the Fremen's spice induced neon blue eyes. The all blacked out PVD cases, however, in the high tech dial circuitry feel like larger franchise homages than specific creations completely mirroring the Fremen people themselves. Anyway, before we nerd out anymore, let's hone in and take a look at some specs. Hamilton's watches, both custom-made and standard issues, have graced the silver screen since the 1932 hit Shanghai Express, and they've maintained such a unique position within the market to be able to accommodate these custom requests from cinema's most noteworthy directors. From Kubrick to Villeneuve, it's been fairly easy for Hamilton to pluck a reference from their archive, use it as their base, their rough blueprint, and then modify and innovate as needed, which is exactly what Hamilton did here when Dune's production came knocking. The Hamilton Ventura was released in 1957, the year that saw the beginning of the space age after the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, achieved orbit and subsequently sparked a space race between the US and the USSR. Not at all surprising then that Hamilton opted for the Ventura's look and feel for a very stylized sci-fi franchise and obviously the Ventura's shape and size carried over. For the first piece, the Ventura XXL Bright Dune Limited Edition, we have a 52mm diameter from the edge of the crown to the case's 9 o'clock point, all washed in a black PVD finish over a stainless steel base. In fact, both watches use a stainless steel skeleton with a black PVD coating, but maintain two different levels of water resistance, the XXL Bright at 50 meters and the Edge with 100 meters. That has a lot to do with the nature of the crowns, one a mere button on the edge and the other a push-pull unit on the analog quartz version, the XXL. The second edition, the Hamilton Ventura Edge Dune Limited Edition, is roughly a millimeter smaller at 51.05 millimeters, with nearly identical lug to lug measurements at 47.6 millimeters and 47.15 millimeters, respectively. That being said, even though the lug to lugs are well under 50 millimeters and the case is fully blacked out, the wearing experience is still fairly hefty. The cases are affixed to similar black rubber straps that integrate seamlessly into the cases and make it seem like the lug-to-lug -lug is longer than it actually is. 
There's just not enough disruption here between the edge of the case and the bracelet to make it seem like they are separate pieces without looking closely. The sweeping case arcs on the XXL version look a bit more true to form to the Ventura, and wholly more recognizable as having built upon the mid-century watch the King of Rock and Roll is famous for having adopted as one of his favorites. The Edge, in contrast, uses enough changes to the Ventura form to make it look more faithful to the Dune universe. Paired with the digital dial and the motherboard-like components 3D printed on the dial, these considerations do make it feel closer to the actual prop created for the film. This is actually the perfect juncture to segue into the dials, because each watch has a button or crown that activates blue LED details, but each watch positions this button differently. On the XXL, this button is located at the 9 o'clock, whereas the Edge uses a button inset within the fixed crown on the right hand side to achieve a similar effect. We're privy to the latter as the XXL's button feels a little less integrated than that of the Edge. That being said, it would have been nearly impossible to integrate an LED button within the crown of an analog quartz movement anyway. On the 180, we have two very different case back designs. The XXL's is far more reserved, just standard case back text, while the Edge gave us a laser etched picture of the moons of Arrakis, complete with production accurate topographic detail on the larger moon that actually gets mentioned in the first film. Both the XXL Bright and the Edge use a sapphire crystal over the dial. The XXL's unit maintains a slight curvature that flows smoothly with the case's smooth curves, while the Edge builds in a flatter yet slightly curved version with notably chunkier chamfers at the edges that feel very pulsar. Right next to each other, the presentation looks virtually identical, but when we put them side by side and experience some reflections, we did notice that the XXL has a significantly better viewing experience than that of the Edge that seemed to reflect any and all light sources that it could find. The choice of movements inside the watches definitely dictated what Hamilton could and could not do with the dial designs for each respective Dune-inspired creations. Case in point, the XXL uses an analog quartz and the Edge uses a digital quartz. As such, the XXL has a handset inset with loom across the seconds, minute, and hour hands, which need to rotate to tell the time and can't bump into any raised dial elements in its track whereas the Edge doesn't have hands and instead displays the hours and minutes with digital numbers in bright blue across two different screen sections. One thing to note is that the seconds hand of our Analog Quartz Edition missed the markers more than a few times, and anecdotally, we've heard this from a few of our other contemporaries. For $1,750, that's a bit disappointing. Hey, a bit more QC or a high-frequency quartz could have certainly bypassed this issue, and that's something very doable at this price point. But what you can't argue with is that the most transfixing parts of either watch are the glowing elements. Hamilton rolled over circular and line shapes and forms almost beat for beat, from the actual production wrist tool we assume Paul wears on his wrist, and at least a few scenes when in full still suit attire. It's not a direct symbol from the Dune universe, but instead seems like an amalgamation of a few different forms. The circular shape and blue color definitely speak to the spice-induced neon blue irises of the Fremen people. That's the most obvious of the lot. But there's also a few symbols that come close in shape and form, like the mix of circles and lines that make up the Fremen crest, for example. Again, the dial of the edge brings a lot more complexity, with custom 3D printed elements. The silver-toned, wire-like components look as though they feed power to the larger vertical pillar that in turn supplies the central blue elements with the power they need to glow, and these elements cut through the dial readouts, segmenting them in half. With the edge, you also get interesting fading in and fading out effects, and the fading out almost seems to flicker similar to the activation of the protective shields we saw characters in the first installment using in battle scenes. Since the crown on the edge does not move, the button controls the time's adjustment. Pressing and holding for a second will reveal a running seconds that doesn't turn off, like the light effects which only stay on for a few seconds, and then a continuous press will activate your adjustment mode. Affixed to both Hamilton Dune Limited Editions are similar rubber straps with pin buckle hardware on each, color matched, and we assume also PVD coated to the cases. The XXL's 23.5mm strap has a predictably smooth finish on top devoid of any texture with Ventura repeating text lining the interior. The Edge's 23mm unit carries over some of the dial's 3D printed texture, and instead of full Ventura text, opts to use a repeating H pattern. We think the more costly of the two, the Edge definitely maintains a form more true to the look and feel of the film, and the bracelet on this version compared to the other ties the look and feel together nicely. Now, unlike other movie watches Hamilton's produced in say the past 10 years or so, and we're thinking specifically here about the Tenant watches, or even the Bolton Quartz Indy had strapped onto his wrist for the last Indiana Jones film, 
The actual consumer watches offered up by Hamilton, in this case, are notably different than the actual prop watch. They don't have the same brushing and aging effects on the case, the triangular Ventura case shape is completely different from the original rounded rectangular form of the prop, and the whole approach feels independent apart from the dial detail crossover with the blue LED concept. As such, you bet that there's already been a fair share of scrutiny level at Hamilton, since they posted teasers on their social media channels about a week before the film's release. One camp can see the watch and its price for what it is, a limited edition run of 5,000 total pieces across two watches, can get past the quartz calibers and don't take them as serious pieces of horology, and instead fun collector's editions. The other camp will most certainly question the price in relation to the caliber, the disconnect from the actual prop watch to the designs released for purchase, and the overall, well, cereal box nature of the watch's look and feel, and we mean that in the best possible way. And here's where we land, we're largely in the first camp of folk who appreciate the watches for what they are, pieces that won't be and don't have to be for every fan of the Hamilton brand or for every watch collector. Hamilton has an expansive catalog of watches for anyone with $2,000 plus to spend and it doesn't necessarily have to be a Dune watch. Conversely, we can also understand where some of the criticism stems from. The main issue here is Hamilton's history of producing some actually wearable cinematic watches with legitimate specifications. You can actually wear the 38mm Hamilton Murph just like you would something like, let's say, the Tissot 1938. And hey, it's tricky, right? Because we also understand that a film like Interstellar set closer to the present day could also get away with a more regular looking watch prop like the Murph, unlike the uber futuristic setting of Dune, where something more ordinary looking, quote unquote, would look wildly out of place. But to sum up our position, maybe had Hamilton reapproached the project, here's what we may have suggested. Maybe take a look at the pricing structure. We're sure there are collectors out there who are massive Dune fans who are going to shell out $2,500 like it's made of pure spice. But for us, it's just a touch steep, and we thought the PSR was expensive. $1,000 or sub $1,000 somewhere seems like it would be the sweet spot. And second, perhaps instead of two quartz watches, make one watch, digital or analog, start there, and then make the watch look closer to that of the actual movie prop. We get that it was probably easier to use the existing Ventura infrastructure to roll out a new watch quicker than it would be starting from the ground up. But hey, again, 2000 plus is no small investment, and there may have been a few more fans of a collectible release closer to that of the actual movie if you're going to keep the prices north of $2000. That all being said, we're always massive fans of Hamilton's cinematic creations and are thrilled to see the engagement each new release fosters. We're equally excited to catch glimpses of the watch in the theater to see exactly how the filmmakers integrated the timepiece into the story. With these releases in particular, we'd love to foster some healthy dialogue, so drop us a line below with your thoughts on Hamilton's latest cinematic collaborations with these two limited edition watches.